Afternoon guys, Sunday afternoon here in Canberra. It's a uh, relatively balmy 17 degrees. We have the beautiful spring flowers opening up. This is a peach over here and we have a, a nectarine that I've just moved close by. The bees are at hard work today. I want to make sure they will get pollinated. But in this video, I'm going to go across some of the latest fig varieties that I have that are successfully rooted. I'm going to very quickly look at some of those plants that I pulled out of the grow tent that have been out for now for about a week to see how removing them from that warm humid environment straight into a Canberra still quite cold spring has treated them and then we're going to very quickly look at that fig cutting that I put outside the tent the other day and I was mentioning replying to a comment earlier today which basically asked how the temperature was going in Canberra at the moment and I did a little bit of a look back in a comparison to last year and by this time last year, we had had two days in August that had hit or exceeded 20 degrees Celsius. And we had had five or six days within the first eight or nine days of September that exceeded 20 degrees. Now this year, August and September combined, we've actually only had a maximum of around 18.8 .8 degrees. So much, much colder maximum temperatures, although the minimum temperatures have been on the higher side so a little bit warmer overnight but a little bit hotter a little bit cooler during the day but on to our figs what do we have that is successfully put on roots that we can officially add to the collection and add it to the list of successful varieties and number one this one is one that took a very long time to root out and it was a little bit difficult actually i had several cuttings of this and only one has got to this stage and another one is potentially budding out but is not looking as healthy this is petite albique so this is a french fig it's in the same family as violette de bordeaux very similar fig it's meant to be a fig that's on the smaller side uh, and this one has been growing in the indoor grow tent we've got a fig here called lebanese black this is one that i've been uh, was really really hoping would strike because it was one of those expensive ones this one came in at 200 dollars on ebay we've got some roots beautifully growing on this fig uh, we've got the leaves in here i actually moved this one that it started life in the outdoor grow tent and it was just being a little bit slow so i moved it indoors and i stepped up the watering to a once day schedule and now in the last kind of week we've put on some good roots on that plant there this is a plant called uh, a cutting called brimbleberry now this is a an unknown variety that someone has named brimbleberry as far as i'm aware uh, according to the listing when i purchased this one it's a south australian fig it's a berry type fig and it's a fig that uh, is in his description the top fig in his collection and if you could only have one fig this would be it so that's a big claim let's see how it fares we've got a fig that's also in the indoor tent this is Babera Brenka got some nice roots on it here uh, this fig has been a little bit lackluster it's got some very deformed leaves these deformed leaves are a very classic sign of fig mosaic virus so when the, the cuttings are very young and still quite weak, they, they get susceptible to the virus a lot more than when they're a bit older. You can see the misshapen leaves that are growing. And what you typically find is you get this kind of discoloration, this mottling pattern on the leaf. You get deformed leaves and then as the plant gets older, it kind of grows out of that and it kind of starts to perform normally. It can, fig mosaic virus, impact very young trees and it can kill them in some cases you can see how thin this leaf is as well you can see my finger underneath it's almost translucent so but with a little bit of time there's some good roots on this plant this one will put out new leaves and will be perfectly fine a bit of a happy one for me noir de barbantan if you remember my video of top 10 most difficult fig cuttings to root that i've had problems with this was on that list so i'm very glad to see some leaves now i don't know if i can fully classify this as successful there aren't any roots showing through at this stage that's not a root that's a little millipede or bug of some description so i haven't seen any roots it's not in a transparent cup but there are a fair few leaves on it so i'm i'm going to take a gamble and say that it is in fact successful and finally this isn't one that i rooted this one was also on my list of top 10 hardest fig cuttings to root. This is Ronde Bordeaux. And this is a, a very special fig to me. It was uh, sent to me by somebody who watched my video and got in contact with me on Facebook and actually sent this one out and sent some other uh, cuttings out. So Ronde Bordeaux and a honey fig. And without 
asking anything in return. So uh, I'm not going to name who it is because I don't know if people like to be kind of mentioned in that off chance that somebody is on the same Facebook group or whatever. Um, but I do big thanks to you. And if you do watch this video, any cutting that you see in my collection, anytime, let me know and I'll, and I'll take you some cuttings or air lay you a plant, no problem. So that's the cuttings that have succeeded so far. And then we'll skip over to the next part. Just before jumping outside to have a look at those fig cuttings that have uh, the, the tropical plants that were moved out of the tent, I want to jump into the tent to show why I moved them for the first place. So originally this patch of the tent had a couple of big plants in here. We had a, a flame tree amongst other, and amongst other plants and all of these fig cuttings grew too big for the indoor grow tent and had to be moved outside. So you might remember from one of my other videos this fig here this is the Oscar unknown that was another video it's now 30 40 centimeters tall um, and they're all putting on so much size that they just I just can't keep them in the tent there's just not enough space so I had to clear this room I didn't want to risk putting them outside while it's still a little bit cold and so what I did was took a couple of sacrificial plants including one of my big cherimoyas that I had um, and a couple of other plants to go look at in a second just so that I could fit all of these figs in here so this tent is becoming more and more uh, a fig tent rather than a tropical grow tent but that's okay because we're almost at that point in the in the season where I'll be able to move these figs out and we'll be able to uh, put them in outside where they can have proper sun and I can start to treat these tropicals a little bit better all right let's go see how those plants are doing outside Okay, the plants that I moved outside of the tent so that I would give them a shot at a more difficult life to see if they'd struggle and get through. Oh look, one of my ladybugs from the tent made it out here as well. Uh, this is the seedling grown cherimoya that I started from seed in my videos over a year ago now, maybe 18 months or so ago. Uh, it's been out here for a week and it hasn't lost a single leaf. So that's making me kind of think I should move the other one out as well as taking up a lot of space in there. They do say that they like some chill hours. This is a, another cherimoya that I pulled out at the same time. And these are undercover, but they haven't been, they haven't been uh, protected or anything since then. And they haven't lost, dropped a leaf. They're putting on growth. So, I mean, they're happy, healthy plants. I can't see why I wouldn't pull out uh, the, the other one and give it that shot to kind of drop its leaves if we do have a, a really cold morning and maybe put on some fruit for me this year. Let's see if that works. Put a wompy out. So this here is a wompy. And this one's doing really, really well as well. Hasn't missed a beat after being taken out of the tents. And I did have little bits of concern because not only is the outside environment far, far cooler than the tent. The tent that I was just in a moment ago was at 32 degrees and it's 17 degrees out here now. It's actually a lot less humid as well. So there was a good chance that these guys would really have a problem. Wompy, not a problem at all. I pulled this out here. This is uh, Inga edulis. So this is the ice cream bean. In fact, I pulled this one out because I'm gonna drop this off to another, uh, another YouTuber's house. So Neil from Cool Tropical Fruits. This is coming your way. I'll leave that by your letterbox in the next few days once I find some time to get up your way. I pulled out a jacaranda. I've got a lot of these in the tent. I just wanted to see how they'd perform. Just like the other plants, hasn't had a problem. It's fine, hasn't dropped any leaves. It's actually putting on a little bit of new growth at the bottom of the stem. Probably started in the tent, but hasn't lost that growth since coming out. This is the long arm I pulled out several weeks ago now, two to three weeks ago. This has maybe dropped a couple of leaves, but it's otherwise totally fine. This has done some cool mornings under here. This has done below zero temperatures. Probably not below zero under this awning, but below zero in general. This is a white sapote that I pulled out at the same time, or maybe a little bit before that um, low quart here. This one here has had some issues. So this is one that I put in the tent. I wasn't gonna put any white sapote in the tent but I almost lost this one last year in winter. This is the Golden Globe variety. So Golden Globe is a lot less cold tolerant than the other white sapote. Um, so I didn't want to, but it was taking up a lot of space. So I kept it in the tent over winter, pulled it out thinking it'd be fine and we've lost some leaves on that one. Meanwhile, most of the other white sapote are fine. So they haven't lost any leaves with the exception 
of this one here which almost totally defoliated and that happened after we had that negative five degree morning that came out of nowhere a few weeks ago i think i i took a video with a chunk of ice that was on the, that slide over there that morning when that happened this totally defoliated almost but it seems to be fine otherwise the other white sapote are, are looking fine the other plant that was severely affected by that negative five degrees even under cover was this one here this is a Hass avocado and it had a very bad time this has been uh it lasted all of winter no problem but that negative five degree day we'd even had negative five degree days prior and it was fine but for whatever reason that day did, did not appreciate it the bark is looking a little bit injured as well there is still green in it we'll see if this has gets through i'm not sure if it will we'll, we'll soon find out the other avocados that i have over here white sapote over here which survived the negative five didn't really get too affected it's obviously lost a couple of branches but it doesn't look like that's having an issue the other avocados fared a little bit better the bacon's fine this is that uh, wurtz avocado that has always been a little bit more uh, sickly than the others this one here actually looks like we have some severe stem damage this is all dead from my thumb up I think this will probably come back from below the stem but this Wurtz is clearly one that is not as cold tolerant as the others um, the Fuerte has also suffered a little bit from that cold spell but there are green leaves on here this isn't in as bad a condition as those other two avocados we looked at and finally the fig that I moved outside so it's just been sitting here I moved it inside one night when we had a negative one prediction I moved it just under cover it hasn't lost any leaves it's doing fine it's put on one tiny leaf there at the top it hasn't really done anything so I guess compared to the one that's inside in the grow tent and maybe I'll overlay an image of that on top of it this one here is fine it's it's not dead it's not dropping any leaves it doesn't seem to be dying but it definitely hasn't put on the same rate of growth as the one that was in the tent now the one that's in the tent still was a little bit bigger than this when i moved it out so it did have a head start but the amount of size it's put on just remaining in the warmth is quite extreme so i guess moving it out early it doesn't necessarily kill your plant but it will slow them down especially if they're in a really kind of uh, ideal environment like my grow tents are hot consistently warm and consistently humid and interestingly uh, when I put all of these figs in the ground when these were rooted cuttings just two years ago 18 months ago maybe even maybe more than I don't remember when it was I look back through the images that I took of these plants to kind of see when I pulled them out of the the grow tent that year and moved them outside and I actually moved them outside on the 2nd of September so probably about the same time that I moved this out and as as we've seen in my previous videos tasting from summer this year uh, all of these figs have put on fruit and don't seem to be stunted in any way so bringing them out early in early September didn't seem to hurt them but with that comparison in the indoor grow tent it's easy to see just how much uh, better they perform if they're given that kind of warm environment based upon this I'm still not quite willing to bring my other cuttings out yet out of either the indoor or outdoor grow tent even though I'm still running low on space I think the indication for when I'm going to do that is when these figs here start to put on leaves. So when nature decides that it's warm enough for these guys to put on leaves and it looks like it might just be occurring, very, very slow start for these figs. But when that happens, I'll move the rest of my figs inside, outside. So guys, that's the end of this video. Again, we'll add those six new cuttings to our collection. We'll add them to the list. I think that brings us up to around 63-ish of successful cuttings. And we'll keep an eye on them. And in another fortnight or so, we'll see if we've got any more of these successful cuttings to add to the list and bring that tally up a little bit higher. But until then, hope everybody is having a great weekend and I'll catch you all in the next one.